everyone let me just check am i audible is the screen clear so that we can start the session now this is the radial nerve second session okay so this is the second session already covered up the first session uh, and this is the continuation of that okay so my dear aspirants let's start with the session meanwhile i just want to give you a brief introduction about the platform and about myself myself dr mona lisa md anatomy from armed force medical college pune have got a total of 9 years of teaching experience and i would also like to talk talk about the special class features the free platform of an academy the free platform of an academy is highly beneficial for you because you are not only seeing the session you can also have the pdf notes you can download the pdf notes once the session is finished you can have an interaction live with the educator who is taking the session you can clear your doubts write itself when the session is going on raise your hands get your doubts clear never ever miss a session anytime anywhere read from the top educators of an academy platform use the code anat10 so use the code anat10 and get use the code anat10 and can enroll for the free sessions of an academy platform when i am talking about plus course all 19 subjects are completed in a very systematic way so all 19 subjects are completed in a very very systematic way you can study from india's top educator you can compete in live test and quizzes you can study on the device of your choice 25000 more clinical mcqs 25000 more clinical recent uh, exam pattern mcqs has been uh, discussed by the top educators you can solve this mcq you will get a detailed explanation given by the top educators of one academy platform all these benefits can be gained by you if you are going to take the plus subscription okay so my dear aspirants i would also like to talk about the iconic subscription when i am talking about iconic subscription it means you are not only getting the benefit of you are not only getting the benefit of an academy plus course that is well structured live batches recorded version full syllabus q bank competitive live test and quizzes but you are also getting the benefits of uh prep ladder so you are also getting getting the benefits of the prep ladder what does that means that means video lectures from the dream team of the uh prep ladder q bank 3 can be assessed rapid revision snapshot treasure dream notes all these can be assessed by you and these are the benefits of iconic subscription so just go for it it will be highly highly beneficial use the code anat10 and get 10% discount i would also like to congratulate the toppers congratulate the toppers of fmg session that is 2021 So FMG December session 2021 and wish them best of luck so that they can crack their exam of NEET PG in the first go with a better rank. I would also like to give you a very important information, my dear aspirants, that introducing the uh, notes for the NEET PG. So an academy plus subscription is giving you free uh, notes uh, with one year of subscription till today. So till today, that is second of March, the. Uh, the offer is valid so for still today that means few hours more you have if you are planning to take the subscription you have just got few hours more go for it and uh, introduce uh, and get the benefit of the neat pg notes and uh, you will get definitely if you are taking the subscription till today one year or more free uh, notes other than that i would also like to tell you about the pl- uh, price is hiking soon so price is hiking coming soon it's uh, coming uh, soon uh, today is the last day of taking the benefit of 6 months and free subscription of an academy use the code and add 10 and get an extra discount of 10% so my dear aspirants accelerate your preparation with no breaks with no breaks my dear free 6 month extension on the subscription of 1 year and more will be provided use this code for getting an extra discount of 10% and go for it i would also like to tell you about the new batches which starting uh, today neat pg 2022 previous year question bank batch focus fmg 2022 uh comprehensive batch focus fmg uh, 2022 nine month batch target next 2023 one year batch okay so all these batches can be assessed by you if you use my code you will get an additional discount of 10% also one more batch is there that is neat pg 22 all educator revision batch so go for it again you can use my code and get an extra discount of 10% now my dear aspirants let's start with the uh, the session today so already i have covered up so already we have covered up uh, the topic of radial nerve anatomy in the previous session what is today the discussion is of clinical anatomy clinical anatomy of radial nerve and the mcqs related to the topic of radial nerve so wrist drop so when uh, the most common injury the most common injury which is seen in the case of uh, 
uh, which involves the radial nerve is the uh, is the crutch palsy okay so if a history of a person is having a crutch palsy and he is using the crutch for the fast few uh, months or days and he complains of wrist pain so L actually what happens it leads to the injury of uh, radial nerve in the axilla and this will lead to the paralysis of extensor group of muscles so this will lead to which muscle is getting paralyzed here all extensor muscles of so it will lead to paralysis of extensor muscles of wrist elbow and that of finger so these are paralyzed these are paralyzed and the person is having wrist drop the person is complaining of the wrist drop inability to grip the object firmly so inability is there for the person to grip the object firmly loss of sensation is also there over posterior surface of arm so the person is also complaining of loss of sensation over the posterior aspect of the arm forearm and that of lower lateral aspect of the arm okay why lower lateral because lower lateral mm, uh, cutaneous sensation of the arm the posterior cutaneous sensation of forearm and posterior aspect of arm these are all cutaneous branches from the radial nerve the dorsum lateral part is also having cutaneous sensation from radial nerve and the lateral three and half of the digit up to nail birds so why not nail birds can anybody give me the answer why not nail birds so nail birds are not involved because we know that lateral three and half of the nail bird dorsally is supplied by which nerve it is supplied by medial nerve so that is not involved okay so after knowing the correct after knowing the correct course of radial nerve and the muscular branches and the cutaneous branches we have derived that if the radial nerve is having an injury in the axilla the reason can be crutch palsy yeah supplied by ulnar okay yeah uh, yeah ready it is supplied by medial nerve if i am talking about dorsal aspect of nail birds uh, dorsal aspect of nail birds i am just talking about the nail birds dorsal aspect lateral three and half so medial one and half okay ready medial one and half is by ulnar nerve but lateral three and half nail birds is by medial nerve so that is the reason they are not paralyzed so this is the presentation of the structure being involved or paralyzed if the lesion of radial nerve is occurring in the axilla crutch palsy so yes my dear um, uh, uh, ready is it okay can we move to the next one so we have done with the crutch palsy one of the clinical aspect was the crutch palsy and we have done with the whole of the i have enlisted whole of the clinical scenario and the structure being involved the muscles being paralyzed and the cutaneous sensation loss let's move on to the radial nerve injury in the case of spiral group the second site of radial nerve injury if i am talking about the second important location of radial nerve injury that second location of radial nerve injury site is at the level of in the spiral groove that is also called as radial groove so yes my dear aspirants when we are talking about spiral groove the other name of spiral groove is radial groove and it is located in the posterior it is located in the posterior surface of humerus bone posterior surface means posterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus bone and triceps is not affected why can anybody tell me in this case we know that uh, the extensions uh, extensions are uh, triceps is located on the posterior aspect of the arm and it is getting innervation from radial nerve but here why not the entire triceps is involved can you tell me the reason anyone triceps not affected in the case of a crutch palsy triceps is affected but not here why why not here anyone so my dear aspens triceps is having medial head lateral head and long head and we have already seen that medial lateral head will get the innervation properly as in the when the nerve is traversing in the spiral group so actually entire triceps muscle is not paralyzed but when the injury is in the axilla the entire triceps muscle is paralyzed here the entire triceps muscle uh, triceps muscle is not paralyzed so uh, yes extension of elbow is not fully impaired because the entire triceps muscle is not paralyzed wrist drop will be there sensory loss is back of forearm dorsum lateral aspect and digit three and half up to the nail birds up to the nail birds so only uh, one important point which is seen here is the entire triceps muscle is not paralyzed because the injury level is not in the axilla and 
the injury level is in the spiral group so in the axilla only we have got the medial and long head is already given the innervation uh, of the tricep so that is spared in the case of injury is happening in the spiral group okay now injury to the deep branch the other uh, clinical scenario which is seen is the when there will be injury it is the case when there is injury to the radial nerve which branch of radial nerve so we know that posterior interosseous nerve is deep branch of radial nerve is deep branch of radial nerve we know that it is the deep branch of radial nerve okay so the deep branch so uh, it's important that when the deep branch of radial nerve is involved the two mother uh, the two muscles that is brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis is not paralyzed so again the reason why brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus is not paralyzed so if you remember today's session it is quite clear that these two muscles so brachioradialis br and ecrl and that is extensor carpi radialis longus these two muscles are getting innervation from directly these two muscles are directly getting innervation from radial nerve rest all extensor group of muscle rest all extensor group of muscle is getting innervation from deep branch of radial nerve and posterior interosseous nerve is actually deep branch of radial nerve posterior interosseous nerve when we are talking about posterior interosseous nerve it is exactly deep branch of radial nerve so deep branch of radial nerve is uh, giving innervation to all extensor group of uh, all extensor group of uh, the forearm but not the two brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus because they are getting directly innervation from radial nerve extension possible but slight radial deviation and sensory loss will be not there why sensory loss is not there because in this case the deep branch of radial nerve is involved so there will be no sensory impairment so there will be no sensory impairment so yes ready is it okay okay let's move on to one more clinical aspect so nurse made elbow the other clinical aspect involved is the nurse made elbow okay so in case of nurse made elbow this is a case of radial head subluxation this is a case of radial head subluxation which is also called as which is also called as nurse made elbow now this is a common injury which is seen in the cases of children commonly the age involved is till 4 years of age commonly the children are involved 4 years of the age and this is seen in the case when the caregiver or those who are taking care of the children will want to save that children from any fall and they will pull their hand or they will swing the bad habit of swinging the children by their hands and in that case at times there can be a uh, subluxation of radial head and the radial head come out through the annular ring and when the subluxation of radial head happens it injures the deep branch of radial nerve so which radial nerve branch is involved in the radial head subluxation there is injury to it lead to the injury radial head subluxation radial head subluxation leads to injury radial head subluxation leads to the injury of deep branch of radial nerve it leads to injury of deep branch of radial nerve got it okay now the other presentation is wrist drop commonly wrist drop results from radial nerve injury so commonly wrist drop involves from the radial nerve injury the deep branch of radial nerve is not carrying any sensory innervation as we know so there will be no involvement of sensory innervation but the muscle or motor supply is affected motor supply is only involved in this case of nurse made elbow so my dear aspirants if i want to summarize the whole of the clinical scenario or the in clinical anatomy of radial nerve involvement the summary of radial nerve can be uh, can be summarized like if there is a history that complete paralysis of triceps muscle if the triceps muscle is paralyzed if there is a complete paralysis of triceps muscle that means the level of injury is in the axilla important for your mcq if brachioradialis is paralyzed with normal triceps brachioradialis is paralyzed with normal triceps injury level is at the level of radial groove or spiral groove the third point is if brachioradialis and triceps both are normal means neither there is involvement of triceps nor there is involvement of brachioradialis that means the injury level is beyond the level of lateral epicondyle 
the injury level is beyond the level of lateral epicondyle so these are three crux point basic point which will help you to locate the level of injury of radial nerve and this can be understood as we have already discussed about the whole course of radial nerve and the relations of radial nerve and the branches of radial nerve in the first component of radial nerve i have divided the whole radial nerve into two classes and in the first session we have already talked about the whole course of the radial nerve along with its branches so those who have missed out so definitely revise it and they can understand the clinical anatomy better okay so correlate with the summary of radial nerve injury along with the location okay let's move on to the next that is question uh, that is let's start with the mcq related to the following important topics question number 1 a patient presents to the emergency department patient presents to the emergency department with weak wrist flexion weak wrist flexion on physical examination sensation to the arm is intact the affected nerve was almost likely to be injured at which of the following location the options are carpal tunnel hook of famet surgical neck of humerus head of radius coraco brachialis muscle the key point here is the patient presents to the emergency department with weak wrist extension weak wrist extension this is the key point weak wrist extension on physical examination the sensation to the arm is intact though the sensation is intact so which of the following nerve is most likely involved or which is the level of injury so either the level of injury is carpal tunnel the level of injury is at the level of hook of famet surgical neck of humerus or head of radius or coraco brachialis muscle so yes your time starts now please mark the correct answer according to you which is the best answer here so my dear aspirant the correct answer is head of radius and i would like to give you a proper explanation so we have just discussed it also and clearly head of radius is the best possible answer okay now here we are quite sure that radial nerve is injured because weak wrist extension is there sensory uh, sensation of arm is still intact sensory nerves are not involved so if we have to pick one we will definitely go with head of radius now radial head subluxation radial head subluxation radial head subluxation is also called as nurse made elbow and it's a common injury which is seen in the case of children and the reason of uh, the radial head subluxation nurse made elbow just now we have talked and we have seen that it can result from the reason behind it is the outward pulling of an extended and pronated arm so my dear aspirants when an adult attempts to pull a child upward by the arm so this is uh, commonly seen in condition of uh, by the nurse uh, by the caregiver who want to save the children from any kind of fall fall and grievous injury and also when they swing the bad habit of swinging the children by their arm so in that case also there is a mechanism of injury that is involved is by pulling and extending the pronated arm radial head subluxation is damaging which branch of radial nerve it is damaging pin nerve that is the deep branch it is damaging pin nerve that is means the deep branch of radial nerve and when the deep branch of radial nerve is involved it will cause paralysis of extensor group of muscles so it will lead to paralysis of a forearm extensor muscles forearm extensor muscles and that is called as wrist drop and the condition is called as wrist drop this is the result of which injury this is the result of radial nerve injury this is the result of radial nerve injury the deep branch of radial nerve does not carry any somatic innervation or sensory innervation so that is the reason sensory innervation will be not involved only the motor innervation will be involved because the nerve injured or the nerve involved here is the deep branch of radial nerve that is posterior interosseous nerve deep branch of radial nerve is involved in case of radial head subluxation now my dear aspirants let's uh, so we have done with the correct answer now i would like to tell you about the ruling out the incorrect option so why the other options are not correct so let's talk about uh, uh, so let's talk about the other one so why the other options are not correct okay so yes now choice a was carpal tunnel now we know that carpal tunnel is a space which is lying below uh, carpal tunnel is space which is causing compression of median nerve because in carpal tunnel median nerve is traversing below transverse carpal ligament of flexor carpal retinaculum 
so in the median nerve we have already talked about the most common site of median nerve being compressed due to increase in the pressure over uh, the uh, the space that is known as osseo fibro osseous uh, space which is lying below flexor retinaculum which is also called as transverse carpal ligament so wo transverse carpal ligament ke बीनीथ एक स्पेस है जिसे हम बोलते हैं कार्पल टर्नल इन दैट द स्ट्रक्चर्स पासिंग इज द मीडियम नर्व एंड इज इज अ कॉमन साइट ऑफ मीडियम नर्व इन कंप्रेस सो द रीजन ऑफ कंप्रेशन कैन बी अथराइटिक चेंजेस एंटीरियर डिसलोकेशन ऑफ लूनेट्स और इन कोलीज फ्रैक्चर सॉफ्ट टिश्यू थिकनिंग मिग्जिडीमा एंड एक्रोमेगैली इडीमा ओबिसिटी एंड प्रेगनेंसी सो दीज आर कॉमन रीजन दीज आर कॉमन कॉजेज ऑफ media nerve and such history was not provided in this mcq carpal tunnel syndrome leads to uh, impairment of fine movements swing knitting picking paresthesia attacks and pain tingling sensation numbness in the radial 3 and half of the affected hand so these are common presentation of the person if it is being involved if the involvement is of the median nerve such kind of history or such kind of location was not performed what not given in the mcq so this is not the right answer the other option was hook of hamet my dear aspirants we have already done with the ulnar nerve course and we have seen in relation to hook of hamet the nerve traversing is ulnar nerve and in this case the nerve being involved is radial nerve so that is the reason hook of hamet is not the right answer now in the rest ulnar nerve when we are talking about the whole course of the ulnar nerve we already know the course of the ulnar nerve is passing through a canal which is called as gyons canal okay so this gyons canal is a again an another uh, fibro osseous tunnel which is uh, which is between hook of hamet and pc form bone so in between hook of hamet and pc form bone and it is covered by volar carpal uh, ligament that is the superficial slip of flexor retinaculum so that is the um, location where it is a common site of compression of ulnar nerve which is traversing along with ulnar artery so two structures passes through the gyons canal one is ulnar nerve and the other is ulnar artery so these structures can be compressed here by the by a by the covering which is called as volar carpal ligament that is superficial slip of flexor retinaculum and in the nerve is compressed here ulnar nerve is compressed here it will cause this this tissue of ulnar side and weakness of intrinsic muscles of the hand why weakness of intrinsic muscles of the hand because we know that major intrinsic muscles of the hand is getting innervation from ulnar nerve so that is the reason uh, it will cause paralysis of intrinsic muscles of the hand so this is wrong option the other option was surgical neck of humerus now again surgical neck of humerus is not the right answer and the reason is that because surgical neck of humerus is related to which nerve it is related to axillary nerve and we know that axillary nerve is giving innervation to two muscles deltoid muscle and that of teres minor muscle now if these two muscle was paralyzed the history would be uh, loss of abduction because we know that important function of deltoid muscle acromial fibers is abduction from 15 to 90 degree teres minor is causing lateral rotation of arm so such kind of history was not performed, not given axillary nerve was not damaged and also cutaneous sensation on superior lateral aspect of arm can be involved so see here the presentation will be fracture of surgical neck of humerus leads to axillary nerve injury which will cause paralysis of deltoid and teres minor muscle also there will be loss of sensation on upper lateral aspect of the arm so there will be loss of sensation on upper lateral aspect of the arm and the movement which is affected is abduction movement of shoulder joint the acromial fibers are the prime abductors of shoulder joint from 15 degree to 90 degree such history was not given so this is not the right answer and injury to axillary nerve was not the right case the other option was coracobrachialis muscle so my dear aspirants we again know that coracobrachialis muscle when we are talking about coracobrachialis muscle this is the muscle of arm and this is the muscle of anterior aspect of the arm which is getting innervation from musculocutaneous nerve 
Musculocutaneous nerve was also not involved in this case when musculocutaneous nerve actually gives innervation to BBC, biceps, brachii, brachialis and coracobrachialis muscle. And these muscles, uh, coracobrachialis muscle is the major arm flexor. It lies deep to the biceps, brachii and, oh, and it is pierced by median nerve. It is innervated, it is, sorry, it is, uh, it is pier, uh, pierced by musculocutaneous nerve as I told you. Musculocutaneous nerve is piercing coracobrachialis muscle and musculocutaneous nerve is giving innovation to BBC muscle that is biceps brachii brachialis and coracobrachialis muscle. Such history or involvement of musculocutaneous nerve was not given in the clinical history of the patient so this is not the right answer. Let us move on to the second MCQ. A 25 year old male fractures his right tibia in a motor vehicle accident. His right leg is fixed in a cast and he requires crutches to ambulate. Two weeks later, he, pre uh, he presents with a difficulty in extending his wrist. Injury to which of the following nerve is most likely responsible for the case? Suprascapular nerve, long thoracic nerve, axillary nerve, accessory nerve, radial nerve, which is the right answer. So here the history is a 25 year old male fractured his tibia in a motor vehicle accident. Okay. And for that he is on a fixed cast. He requires crutches to ambulate. Okay. So that is the hint which is the mechanism of injury. So and later he has difficulty in extension of the wrist. So clearly we are knowing which nerve is involved. So I have also explained just now that crutch palsy, crutch uh, palsy means radial nerve inju uh, injury in the axillary region. So, he, this is a case of radial nerve being involved. And there is also, and there is also, so this is the right answer. And there is also difficulty in extending the wrist. So, this is giving us the right crutches to ampulate. These are the key words which is giving us the right answer. This is the clinical history giving injury to radial nerve. So, improperly, when I have just... Uh, uh, gone through this clinical condition and I have told you that improperly fitted crutches are the reason of radial nerve injury and when the radial nerve is injured at this level it will lead to paralysis of all extensor group of muscles of forearm, the finger extensor, the wrist extensors. So this will be a case of wrist drop. So that means when the level of injury is at the level of axilla it will lead to all the extensor muscle loss or paralysis of the function of all extensors of the wrist, extensors of the fingers, extensors of the forearm will be involved in this case. Okay, the patient is suffering from pressure induced radial nerve injury and the patient is suffering from pressure induced radial nerve injury. Yes, hello, hello uh, Siddiqui and most likely this is a condition of improperly fitted crutches. This is a case of improperly fitted crutches. That is the most common mechanism of radial nerve injury. Radial nerve injury can be injured at this level if there is an ill-fitting crutch and repetitive pressure is involved in this level. This will ultimately cause crutch palsy. This will ultimately cause crutch palsy. Any doubt, uh, Siddiqui and Reddy, you can ask me. Injury to... The radial nerve leads to paralysis of extensor group of muscles, both of the forearm and the extensors of the digit and that of the wrist and the condition is called as wrist drop. Okay, so this is the right answer. Now what about the wrong answer? So we have got other options. So quickly I will tell you why the other options are absolutely wrong. Now we know that suprascapular nerve is giving innervation to two muscles. One is supraspinatus. And the other is infraspinatus. So suprascapular nerve root value C5 and C6 branch of upper trunk of brachial plexus and these are the muscles which is not involved actually loss of wrist extension or extensor function was lost wrist drop was the condition we know that supraspinatus muscle is causing initiation of abduction initiation of abduction means 0 to 15 degree uh, and we know that infraspinatus muscle is the lateral rotator of the shoulder joint. So, infraspinatus muscle is the lateral rotator. Okay. So, yes, uh, we know that. Okay. We know that 
abduction so we know that abduction 0 to 15 degree when we are talking about initiation of abduction is done by supraspinatus muscle so in this clinical scenario initiation of abduction was not involved so you can clearly see initiation of abduction was not involved 0 to 15 degree uh, or anyone who is having any academic doubts they can write here actually related to the topic anyone is having any academic doubt related to the topic they can write here Okay, also all of you can join me on the uh, Unacademy Future Doctor Telegram group on the Telegram group of Neat PG. Let's crack uh, uh, Neat PG, all that group and also all in all the medical related group of the Unacademy. I am there as an educator. So your doubts can be cleared. Also, if you have got any relevant doubt now uh, related to the topic, you can just clear it now itself. Now, suprascapular nerve innervates supraspinatus muscle and also innervates infraspinatus muscle that is a well known fact and we know that supraspinatus muscle is not causing extension movement of uh, of the fingers or wrist or the elbow but it is causing abduction of shoulder joint that is initiation of abduction that was not lost in this condition also infraspinatus muscle is lateral rotator of the shoulder joint that is also lost in this not in in this case so this is the wrong option suprascapular nerve can't be the right answer now let's talk about long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve now why long thoracic nerve is not the right answer okay uh, so yes uh, anyone mohammed siddiqui uh, so what you want to ask you can just write here you can write your messages long thoracic nerve is giving innovation to which muscles serratus anterior muscle it is giving innovation to serratus anterior muscle and long thoracic nerve is also called as bell's nerve or nerve to serratus anterior muscle this is the other name of long thoracic nerve we know that it is having the root value c5 c6 and c7 and it arises from the ventral rami of c5 c6 and c uh, c5 c6 and c7 cervical nerve and it is supplying serratus anterior muscle so if long thoracic nerve is injured that means the action of serratus anterior muscle will be not uh, um, uh, able to perform and we know that serratus anterior muscle is causing protraction movement of the scapula it is causing overhead abduction so that means uh, 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 the case uh, will be of winging of scapula so we know that when long thoracic nerve is injured uh, the medial border of the scapula is protruded outward when the person is pushing against the wall winging of scapula is seen and the reason is bell's nerve long thoracic nerve is being involved the other involvement will be overhead abduction is gone and also the common reason of long thoracic nerve being involved is in the case of radical mastectomy so in cases of radical mastectomy when we go for the a treatment of breast cancers and all we go for lymph node removal also in that case there can be injury to long thoracic nerve and there can be paralysis of serratus anterior muscle but here there was no injury to long thoracic nerve and no serratus anterior muscle was paralyzed now the other option is axillary nerve again axillary nerve can't be the right answer And the reason is that why axillary nerve is not the right answer because we already have discussed before also axillary nerve is giving innovation to deltoid and teres minor muscle and none of this muscle is causing extension movement and none of this is involved here loss of abduction movement of, uh, of mainly the 15 to 90 degree or cutaneous sensation uh, on the deltoid muscle is also not involved so this is not the right answer so that is the reason axillary nerve the more common reason of axillary nerve being involved is the uh, is the location and is the case of surgical neck of humerus or is the case of anterior dislocation of uh, glenohumeral or shoulder joint that was not presented in this case and that was not involved so definitely axillary nerve is not the right answer the other option was accessory nerve so my dear aspirants accessory nerve means 11th cranial nerve okay and we know that if we talk about the muscles supplied by the 11th cranial nerve two muscles are there sternocleidomastoid muscle and trapezius muscle and the more common site of injury of accessory nerve is in the posterior triangle of the neck actually if we see the location of accessory nerve in the posterior triangle of the neck it is traversing between the roof and the floor that means it is traversing between the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and the pre-vertebral layer of deep cervical fascia so spinal accessory nerve passing through foramen magnum passing through jugular foramen and will 
innervates it will go towards the it will in the posterior triangle of the neck it will give innervation to two muscle that is sternocleidomastoid muscle and that of trapezius muscle so when the sternocleidomastoid muscle is involved flexion movement of the head neck regions and also the rotation movement is involved and also trapezius muscle is involved for the overhead abduction and it is along with serratus anterior muscle it is uh, its fibers are also involved in trapezius is involved for elevation of the a uh, uh, shoulder so these presentations or these involvement of action was not presented in this case so the correct answer can't be the accessory nerve spinal accessory nerve because um, uh, the presentation was loss of extension not the loss of any of the involvement of uh, sternocleidomastoid or trapezius muscle let's move on to the next one question number 3 okay my dear aspirants let's move on to question number 3 a 30 year old uh, man underwent radial head excision right radial head excision okay now following the surgery he is unable to extend the fingers these are the key points of the thumb and right hand he is not having a complaint of any sensory deficit he is not complaining of any sensory deficit which of the following is most likely the cause of the condition injury to posterior introsius now iatrogenic injury to common extensus origin injury to anterior introsius nerve or high radial nerve injury so anyone who wants to give the answer can give the answer so here we can see radial head is involved excised and i will know that in this case the loss of extension of finger and thumb is there but no sensory deficit this is another key point so no sensory deficit that means the deep branch of radial nerve is involved actually radial head subluxation okay radial head subluxation so actually the um, uh, radial head subluxation it's a case of radial head subluxation and uh, and also when radial head is excised in that case what happens d branch of radial nerve is involved and here when d branch of radial nerve is involved we know that pin nerve so the correct answer will be injury to the posterior introsius nerve so injury to posterior introsius nerve posterior introsius nerve is the d branch and this is involved this is involved in this case injury to posterior introsius nerve is the right answer d branch of radial nerve is involved and in if the d branch of radial nerve will be involved no sensory deficit are there so clearly the correct answer will be a okay so in cases of radial head subluxation nurse med uh, elbow uh, and uh, and in cases of radial head uh, in, involved we have got only the d branch of radial nerve being involved that is pin nerve anterior introsius nerve means uh, branch of medial nerve and it is not involved high radial nerve palsy will involve cutaneous sensation also and common extensus muscles involvement is not there atrogenic so here will be the injury of d branch of radial nerve let's move on to question number 4 which of the following uh, which is correctly paired with its nerve supply so we have done with the important nerves and you have to tell me the correct pairing here flexor pollicis longus is getting innervation from anterior introsius nerve flexor digitorum profundus is getting innervation from anterior introsius nerve extensor carpi radialis longus is getting innervation from posterior introsius nerve Brachioradialis is from posterior introsius nerve and abductor pollicis longus is from anterior introsius nerve. So these are the combination. As you can see, you have to tell me which is the right combination here, which is the right combination of the muscle and nerve supply. Okay, mark the correct answer, which is the right one. which is correctly paired with its nerve supply which of the following is correctly paired with its nerve supply so your time starts now you can mark the correct answer okay what is the right answer dear i would not like to give the answer i just put okay a what is the right answer dear okay you can give the right answer whether it is a b or c d e okay my dear aspirants i would like to tell you the right answer here actually the correct answer is a flexor pollicis longus anterior introsius nerve flexor pollicis longus anterior introsius nerve 
So my dear aspirants, this is the right. Actually, flexor pollicis longus is the muscle of the flexor groove which is giving, getting branched from the D branch. Okay. So, okay. So flexor digitorum profundus is not the right answer. The reason is that FDP, flexor digitorum profundus is getting innovation from both median nerve that is anterior introsius branch of median nerve plus the ulnar nerve. So medial part is getting innovation from ulnar nerve and the lateral part is getting innovation from anterior introsius nerve. So this is wrong. Extensor carpi radialis is directly getting innovation from radial nerve. Extensor carpi radialis longus is directly getting innovation from radial nerve. Brachioradialis is not getting innovation from posterior introsius nerve. It is also getting directly innovation from radial nerve. Abductor pollicis longus is the muscle of is the muscle of uh, extensor group only. So it will get innovation from pin nerve, posterior introsius nerve, not anterior introsius nerve. So is it clear? So that means the correct combination is um, everyone. Is it clear? So any doubt, any doubt you can ask me. Any doubt dear? Any doubts you can ask me. Is it clear? Flexor digitorum. Uh, uh, flexor digitorum profundus is not the right answer because it is a uh, it is a hybrid muscle getting innovation from both medial nerve and ulnar nerve. Both uh, medial nerve and ulnar nerve. Flexor pollicis longus is the muscle of deep. So actually flexor pollicis longus muscle is the muscle of deep forearm flexor muscle deep forearm flexor muscle so it is getting innovation from deep branch anterior introsius which is the deep branch of median nerve so a is the correct answer now flexor pollicis longus is the only muscle which is getting innovation from anterior introsius nerve which is a branch of median nerve deep branch let's move on to the next radial nerve innovates which muscle in the extensor compartment uh, uh, Radial nerve innovates muscles in the extensor compartment of forearm but it also innovates which of the following muscle. That means actually uh, you have to mark the correct answer. So one of this is uh, located, it's also a muscle of extensor group but located more uh, uh, other position. It is lying on the more lateral, hint is that it is lying on the lateral aspect, posterolaterally. So yes, now I am getting a correct answer from Vadhi, Vadhi. Whether he is giving the right answer. Yes, Vadhi, you are absolutely right. Yes, dear Vadhi, very good. You are absolutely right. Great, dear. So, yes, Vadhi, you are absolutely correct. Yes, the correct answer is uh, brachioradialis. Yes, so brachioradialis is the correct answer because it is getting innovation from directly from radial nerve. So, this is the correct answer. Pronator teres is getting innovation from which, mass, uh, which nerve? Median nerve. Palmaris longus is also getting innovation from median nerve. Pronator quadratus is getting innovation from anterior introsius nerve, deep branch of median nerve, that is deep branch of median nerve. And palmaris longus, we have already seen it is getting innovation from median nerve. Okay, so only A is the correct, brachioradialis is the correct answer. Is the brachioradialis is also having the action of flexors of forearm as we know that its action is also uh, the flexion but it is located in the location white uh, it is located in the extensor compartment so its nerve supply is by radial nerve directly. So two muscles actually ECRL and brachioradialis are getting innovation from radial nerve. Now my dear aspirants before ending I would like to tell few important one of the important point is at 8 p.m. that means after 15 to 20 minutes on the unacademy uh, free platform on the unacademy free platform all of you can join join me for the special class special free class that is clinical mcq so the session is of clinical mcqs so a special free class that is a session of clinical mcqs that is for targeting neat pg 2022 so 8 pm i am going live all of you those who are interested can join me for the live session unacademy app download use the code and add 10 so use the code and add 10 for enrolling in the free sessions and be present for the live session. Introducing the notes of NEET PG has been introduced and all 19 subjects notes can be uh, can be taken by you and this is a, a, an offer is going on till today that is 2nd of March. If you are going to take one year of subscription, 
so if you are going to take one year of subscription you are getting um, the free notes of unacademy free notes of the unacademy neat pg and also price is going to hike from today so if you are planning you just go for today only because just now you will get a benefit of extra six month extension so if you are going to take a plan of one year or more you are getting an extension of six months absolutely free absolutely free so just go for it use this code and get an ex extra discount of 10 percent so this is a highly beneficial offer that if you are going to take the subscription today till today you will get an extra six month of subscription free you will get uh, an uh, uh, need PG notes also that is made by the top educators of Unacademy platform of all 19 subjects. So all these benefits are uh, uh, can be gained by you if you are going to take the subscription till today. And also those who want to join the free sessions of mine, I am going to take just now 8 p.m. Tomorrow also I will take a session on 6 p.m. So those who want to take this uh, benefit, they can join me live for the 8 p.m. free session free special session on the unacademy app so note down this is on the unacademy app do present and you can down, download the unacademy app and use my code unlock code that is an ad 10 to be present free all the best and uh, okay vadihi welcome dear and uh, all those can download the unacademy app and they can attend my free session 8 pm today 6 pm tomorrow also so you can be present for the free session because in the special classes when you attend the session on the special platform you can also have the pdf note so that is the additional benefits that can be gained by you all the best keep studying thank you so much so do like subscribe and share the channel of the unacademy future doctors unacademy future doctors all the best keep studying thank you so much link of my class will be provided in the unacademy future doctors telegram group let's crack neat pg telegram group and unacademy neat pg telegram group so you can get the uh, get my uh, free session link and also when you go to unacademy app you can get the link all the best keep studying thank